monks, perhaps the most misunderstood unit in this game, there are a lot of misconceptions around them. Depending on the people you follow in the age scene, you might not have heard about this at all, but in a lot of communities nowadays it's a pretty widespread belief that monks are either overpowered or need some kind of nerf. And while many of the arguments seem to make sense on the surface, I will try to explain why I think they are not justified once we look at the facts. First I will go into some pros and cons regarding the unit. A lot of these are not going to be new, but they will be important as I'm going to reference them later when discussing the arguments. Let's start with the pros. Number 1. Converting an enemy unit not only removes them from the opponent but gives you an additional unit to work with. Pretty self-explanatory and a good investment for 100 gold if you can actually get conversions. This makes monks excellent in scenarios where the armies are small but high in value, such as elephants, knights, rambai, war wagons, mangodai, and so on. Number 2. Healing. The healing benefit means that taking equal trades against them is not sufficient because monks can replenish losses on units that didn't die. Also means the opponent will have to time their attack well. If they attack too early and not win the fight, the player with monks can even come out of the fight with more units that are going to be fully healed. Number 3. Only gold cost. This can obviously be a drawback when gold runs low, However, in early and mid game, typically it's an available resource and having villagers on gold requires little to no effort. Number 4. Ability to convert enemy monks, siege or buildings. Clearly very sieve dependent as some of them may miss some or even all of the texts required to do them. However, if your sieve does have access to these texts, it can be a powerful tool in dealing with these units or neutralizing siege defense and converting defenseless buildings. Number 5. Able to be garrisoned inside TC's castles. This makes defending with them easier in a certain area if enemy units decide to dive in. Moving on to cons now. Number 1. Slow immobile unit. A very obvious drawback and one that greatly reduces their usability with the distance traveled increasing. If the fight is not happening where the monks are, good luck getting them where they need to be. Number 2. Fragile. Lacking any powerful stats, monks are an easy target for many units. Without sanctity, mangonas kill them in one hit. Light cavalry kills monks in two hits, three with sanctity. A mere five crossbow bolts are enough to kill a monk or 7 with Sanctity. Number 3. Always needs Micro. So unlike most units that will do their own thing even if you don't micro them at all, monks will just sit there and die unless you command them to convert units. This means they cannot be left out of sight when the opponent decides to attack, demanding very good game sense from the monk player to not look away at the wrong moments. Number 4. Slow Production. 51 seconds is a long time for a single unit to be made. Just for comparison's sake, the slowest producing unique unit, the Mangodai, is created in 26 seconds. This means in order to keep up with production of certain units, you may need 2, 3, 4 monasteries, which at 175 wood apiece does add up to a lot sometimes. Number 5. Poor scalability. In this regard, Monks are also an exceptional unit compared to most others, and this is strongly related to the micro aspect. It might be easy to micro 3, 4, 5 monks, however the more you have, the more difficult it gets to get the same effective value out of them, as we are limited by just how fast we can click them. Until Theocracy, the aspect of multiple monks losing faith on a single target also limits the usability of monks once they reach the double digits. Sure, you can get 3 out of 3 conversions against 3 knights, but can you get 30 out of 30 converts against 30 knights in Castle Age? You would need insanely good micro to get even half. On the topic of a certain unit being OP, I think it can be essentially be broken down to two categories. One would be in a broader sense, applying to many settings and maps, for example, pre nerf crossbows come to mind. The second category would be related to a more specific setting like pre-nerf Janissaries in 1v1 Arena 
or conks on Nomad. I do believe there is room for a unit being overpowered even if it's only related to a certain setting, and no singular unit should be as dominant. I won't go into the details of the mentioned units here, they only serve as examples. Do we think monks fit the bill for either of these two categories? For the answer, let's take a look at the most ideal setting for monks. The latest Masters of Arena Tournament. With the map script having 1800 HP stone walls already in Feudal Age, means that Feudal play is pretty much out of the game, only fast castle. Monks thrive on low economy settings, so that's a check mark. Short distance to the opponent, check. Having a safe stone wall base, so being immobile is less of an issue, check. Needing less macro on a small economy, check. Ability to counter many of the high value unique units we tend to see on arena, check. The chance to force fights in one place, check. The chance to focus mostly on army, therefore having fewer moments to look away, check. Now we could think that with all these aspects factored in, monks would have absolutely dominated the tournament, but that was not the case at all. Which was the most common opening instead? Light Cav. The only sets where the majority of the games were not like Kevin Boom were in the Silver League, where many players simply didn't care that much about playing the ideal opening. So it seems that even in the most favorable settings, monks are not the strongest unit. We could argue that Light Cav being so prevalent on Arena is because of the strength of the monks. However, this does not make them overpowered in any way, since they do have their counters. Now whether this makes the games have less variety overall is a different topic. The fact is, light calves have dominated every single arena tournament in the last couple of years and nerfing monks is not going to help that issue at all. Moving on from arena, let's consider the other maps, where the settings for monks are far less ideal. Whenever monks are used with success, it's almost always in combination with some other units. Whether it's cavalry plus monks, pike siege monks, or crossbow monks, the key point is, depending on the opponent's army composition, you will need to protect the monks. Light cav and crossbows are both quite effective at sniping monks, and we can add pikes and siege units respectively to counteract this. Is it fair to say that monks combined with pikes and siege is overpowered? Well, I don't think that's the case, even if it was, we are talking about three different units at this point, all requiring extensive amounts of micro by being a very slow army to move around. A lot of the complaints I heard about monks is in regards to making cavalry play harder. When we have a player with crossbows against a player with knights in early castle age, the crossbow player adding some monks makes it difficult for the knights to find a good engagement. But now we are back to the previous argument we have an army composition of monks and crossbows countering a singular unit type, knights. It can also cause frustration when playing cavalry against a fully walled opponent, as monks from behind walls can deter cavalry easily. I would argue this applies to most cases where the ranged units are behind walls against melee units. Scouts trying to break in versus walled archers or knights trying to break in against walled crossbows is in principle the same issue. So I believe this has more to do with walls being strong in general. Some argued maybe monks shouldn't be able to be garrisoned in TCs, as it makes it difficult for the knight player to dive in. I think this is a similar situation to when the defending player is on crossbows, which can jump into TCs all the same, while also making the TCs themselves stronger. The thing is, knight's diving TCs often has to be a big commitment, because against both crossbows and monks, you need enough damage dealt to justify the losses. Combine this with high level players being extremely good with quick walling, this makes knights diving TCs a really difficult task regardless of monks. There were games where players using redemption monks seemed too strong to some viewers because one player ended up converting a bunch of buildings with no resistance. I believe there is a bit of survivorship bias in effect here because there are plenty of games where redemption simply doesn't pay off nearly as much. And even in the cases where it does, it's a pretty massive cost to spend early castle with 475 gold and 175 gold on top of that to get sanctity as well as you don't want to get one shot by siege. 
Add to that the necessity to make at least two monasteries so you can get the text researched and monks created on time. Redemption is not a pack you can just pick up whenever you feel like. Often we see players losing a bunch of buildings to redemption monks, but it's because they have lost complete control of the game already, and the opponent having four rams taking out buildings would be similarly terrible for less of a cost than redemption monks. Also, if you are using redemption defensively, it might help to deter the enemy mangonas, but once you do, there is absolutely no guarantee that you can re use redemption aggressively, as the opponent might have an army that completely counters yours. There are also complaints about so-called instant conversions as well. I know the term is not meant to be taken literally, but since the minimum conversion time is roughly 5 in-game seconds, the only cases where you lost units too early resulting in a bad engagement, or lost units to conversions while running away, are simply player mistake. Even factoring in human reaction times and all that, if you pull units away on time, they will not get converted even with the worst luck. And if you can't afford to lose units to faster conversions in a fight, fact is you couldn't afford to take the fight to begin with. Do not engage unless you are fully ready to commit. I will explain in my next point why taking fights against monks is a little different than against most other units. Because of conversions increasing the DPS of an army and healing after fights making up for the HP losses, it is not advised to take many small trades against monks since after every fight they fully heal everything and you might be giving them new units with every try. If the monks convert half your army or more, the fight will likely already be decided since the opponent has the same DPS but with monks also healing them. For example, it's generally not advised to fight 5 sanctity monks with just 4 light cav since if you lose 2 of them to conversions, which is likely, then the momentum of the opponent's push is only increasing. You're better off waiting and massing more if you can, because the scalability of monks is not great, they will likely not get a conversion with every monks once the armies are in higher numbers, and taking an engagement with roughly equal resources should result in an easy cleanup for light caps. A really important aspect that I want to mention for this topic is the longevity of feudalage, or rather the lack thereof in the recent meta. There are a bunch of maps to consider of course, but let's consider the semi-open maps, especially Arabia. It has become a rare sight to see extended feudal age armies. This results in players entering castle age faster with a weaker economy and fewer units. Monks, as we mentioned, thrive on low economy and against low numbers of high value units. And that high value unit is so often knights. So of course, monks can get great value there. Now let's consider an opposite example, let's say a typical game of Acropolis, Atacama or Land Madness where extended feudal age fights are common, which results in usually some type of leftover army leading into castle age. If you have 8 scouts or 15 archers leading into castle age, there is very little relevance for monks at that point. Even skirmisher armies can kinda negate the threat of monks. The players enter castle age with armies that already counter monks, with economies that allow multiple units to form a composition instead of a 35 villager economy supporting low numbers of knights. So maybe the higher prevalence of monks in recent times is more of a map issue. If the so-called open maps would actually play out aggressive, then monks would be much less relevant. Another topic to mention is knights versus pikemen. This has sparked some debate already. Do pikes actually counter knights or vice versa? And the answer greatly depends on when. Because if we take the previous example of short feudal age into knights, then pikes might not work very well against them. Pikes are a trash unit, they need to be upgraded, and trash units typically prefer to be massed before we hit the next stage. In a short feudal age, spears are unlikely to be massed, since there is no reason to. Therefore, Low numbers of knights can take effective trades against low number of pikes, and only later, when the economy can sustain mass production of pikes, does that change. How does this relate to monks? Well, in early castle age, if feudal age was short, monks are a preferred option as a counter to knights, precisely because monks are a low economy unit best used against low numbers of units. Whereas pikes are a better long-term investment that scale way better against cavalry. 
removing either of these options would mean that knights don't have an effective counter at one or more stages of the game. Also, there are games where the defending player has no other option but to make monks in order to survive. For example against only knights, siege pushes or perhaps the best example I can give is facing conquistadors on nomad. Nomad allows for very low eco pushes which makes some of the unique units very strong since they require little to no upgrades to be powerful. If we were to remove monks as an option there, there would be a lot of games where conks or other strong unique units simply have no counterplay at all. I've heard the argument that recently in pro games, monks are used very often, one way or another. I really don't see how that makes the unit overpowered though, since they are usually a support unit. The only maps where monks can be a main unit are the likes of Arena, Socotra, Fractal, maps where the distance is relatively short and the economies are weak. We see monks a lot nowadays, we also see a lot of crossbows, knights, mangonels, does that mean that these units are all overpowered? We see scouts on land madness 95% of the time, does that mean scouts are overpowered on this map? No, this simply means that the meta on this map suits them, just like how the short feudal age meta on Arabia suits army compositions with monks as supporting units. You can like or dislike the unit, that's your preference and you have every right to it. You can also complain about maps playing out with too little variety. I complain about that too. Not just watching tournaments, but playing the games myself. It is a problem in the game currently. It's not because of monks though. The unit does exactly what it's supposed to. The problem is the maps encouraging very short feudal ages and walls and rewalling being too difficult to punish. I would like to give a short mention to team games in general as well. Sometimes on arena flank there is monk play or on the odd black forest game, but other than that, most open maps are just knights and crossbowmen. It's been like that for decades now. It's even more jarring how mixing in any type of other unit actively hurts your chances. So other units, including monks, are just completely out of the equation, yet somehow that's not deemed an issue currently. And the final argument I'm gonna address in this video is apparently how most pro players are advocating for some kind of monk nerf. The way I see it is that most players in the top 50 or so actually either haven't voiced their opinion on the topic or they have a neutral stance on the subject. The amount of pros advocating for monk nerfs is definitely not a majority. I've also heard a couple of pros mention that monks are not an issue balance wise, but of course that doesn't gain nearly as much traction as calling something overpowered or broken. And while in general I do agree with the sentiment that the game should be balanced for the pro level, I don't think that pro players' opinions are the only thing that should be taken into consideration, given how either consciously or subconsciously, you might be advocating for balance changes that suit your style. And I think in general we should also be taking into consideration the maps and how they shift the dominant strategies before fundamentally changing one of the core units in the game. Alright, final, final note, I am willing to engage in public debate about the topic if that's something you're interested in. With that, thanks all for listening and watching and please keep it civil in the comments.